Little sucks your hopes. They're coming. It can't be. Where is everyone? Hey, survivors. So, what makes a great and immersive post-apocalypse story? That's something I've been dealing a lot with as I've been writing and collecting stories for Legends of Wasteland City Season 2, coming up uh, real soon in 2024. I've been having a lot of great dives into writing in general that I have not done since college. We've been talking, I've been looking into character, theme, inciting incidents, and how to get rid of what the industry calls shoe leather, which is all the stuff that doesn't really need to be in there. And we will look back on some of the great post-apocalypse movies like Mad Max gaining back his humanity, or the Mariner learning to trust that not all humans are bad. There's usually some common themes that we see, like the breakdown of order, or how people adapt to a changing world. Death is often on the forefront, and there's new importance for human connection. Today I'm going to be talking to the co-war chiefs of the Boneyard Buzzards, who are a scaver tribe and big in the jet trade which is a fictional drug of choice in the Fallout video game series. And not only are they both in storytelling adjacent professions, which I think is really cool, but they also donated the first month's edition of our patch of the month on Patreon. In case you didn't know yet, the Apocalypse Post has started the patch of the month for all supporters in the $10 and up support levels. All the patches will be original designs from the Apocalypse Post and the greater Wasteland community. I'm trying to mix things up a little bit. And will be sent out every month for all of 2024 while I experiment with this whole new program. Uh, it already seems like it's going to be a success and something I'll be continuing. But for now, I'm committing to 2024. So anyway, you can find out more information on that on our Patreon, patreon.com slash the Apocalypse Post. And uh, let's get into it with the Boneyard Buzzards as we talk about story, immersion, and how to show newbies a good time. The Love Bombs provide top-notch outcomes for the most discriminating clients all across the wasteland. When you need executive escort and protection, intelligence analysis, direct action, or other specialized solutions, the Love Bombs provide a bespoke option tailored directly to your needs. Listen to this heartfelt testimonial from one of the Love Bombs satisfied clients. I heard the Love Bombs to save my precious Pookie Pie from them there scabs over yonder. They was fixing to turn his poor hide into jerky. Woo! I reckon not a one of those bastards will walk away from this scuffle. <laughs> Goodness gracious, I reckon I ain't ever seen a gun that big. The love bombs will give your enemies a lick and they won't soon forget. Yes, the love bombs. They're polite, professional, and have a plan to kill everyone they meet. The love bombs provide complete confidentiality in their free initial consultation. That's right, the initial consultation is absolutely free. Remember, the love bombs. Artillery available. <laughs> All right, and welcome to the show, two of the foremost Boneyard Buzzards, Lady Fahrenheit and Magpie. Hello, ladies. Hi. Hi. <laughs> welcome to the show. Thanks so much for coming on. Oh, thanks for having us. And thank you so, so much for sponsoring. Well, it's kind of a sponsorship, but for donating, I don't know, for sending me some wonderful... <laughs> All right, check this out. Here's the, my tiny little envelopes that are going to go out. Um, and they have your patches... Which, by oh, the way, cute. I need to know where you got these made because I just like that style. Like, it's not quite embroidery, but it's, like, really tight. So we're going to talk later yeah. about where you got that. And, of course, you. the Boneyard Buzzards emblem sticker with yeah. um, with the LGBT uh, yeah. rainbow behind it. Is that right? <clears throat> yeah, we yeah. did those for, a, like, a pride fundraiser. So the mm -hmm. proceeds for that went to, like, a donation thing. Just mm -hmm. Oh, that's so cool. That's that was a lot of fun for us and the group really cares about that kind of stuff oh, yeah, and we'll bring it. that back again um this next part month fantastic yeah but um for everyone who's signed up so far um you're gonna get one of these in the mail in mid-february probably early february because i already am out of them every one you guys sent is it, it is earmarked for one of the patreon sponsors so it's really amazing oh, no. <laughs> yeah i did not think it was going to happen that fast but between new people signing up and people upgrading their current patreon to the ten dollar level um they're all spoken for which is awesome 
That's um, awesome. I definitely sent you extra too. So that's I, really cool. I know. I know. Well, it's it's so funny, um, you know, trying to figure out how many of these we're going to need, um, you know, based on how many people are already eligible. Because, mm-hmm. I, you know, I, it's kind of a new thing. It's a new idea. And um, I, I didn't know how many people would be interested. Uh, so I think I had maybe seven or eight people eligible when the pro when the project launched um and i was not expecting so many people to jump on so i definitely appreciate that everyone's jumped on and that you sent me extras um but if anyone does uh sign up this month after now which is you know a few days ago for you guys listening um i will send a makeshift patch in its place uh and a <laughs> and a, and an apocabob sticker just so you don't feel like you're missing out and i have a feeling if you have not signed up before because uh, i did do the makeshift patch before for patreon signups but um if you're uh, newly signing up uh you probably don't have it yet anyway so i hope it's an equal trade but next month i already have more patches on the way so sign up people (laughs) anyway thank you guys so much for sending it uh this is super fun and it's great to have you guys as the inaugural um patch of the month because Mm -hmm. i love the boneyard buzzards oh it's an honor yeah (laughs) so i want to know a little bit more about you guys um could you kind of introduce yourselves and tell me a little bit about the buzzards i go first oh um okay yeah uh so yes the boneyard buzzards uh we are uh in lore ish sort of um a local scavenger group um based out of the shrapnel of the boneyard which is los angeles yeah we out of lore we've been around since 2016 that was my first year fahrenheit's second year and that was the year that we left wasteland walkie talking each other on the drive out of h park going okay, how do we form a tribe? How do we camp theme? Like two cars of people just like on walkie talkies uh, (laughs) planning our 2017 wasteland. That's awesome. Um, And then we decided on, uh, I guess it would have been 2017. We decided Mm -hmm. to be jet dealing chem runners in the fallout style. Uh Um, And it's kind of snowballed from there. Now we are the yes. premier jet dealers for Undertown and all of Wasteland City, which means we got in lore, very funny, but multiple death threats this year <laughs> about how we're going to kill you and take your jet empire. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, because you like guys moved from the uh, the Green Place, which is outside the wall. Uh, mm-hmm. And the Green Place is kind of um, a territory of survivors, like peaceful survivors that are very craft-based, um, very earthen-based. Is that is that right? Is that a fair way to say it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they kind of, we lovingly call it soft apocalypse, like nomadic, like really kind of soft builds, a lot of like cozy spaces. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were constantly having to be like, hey, neighbors, we're going to probably have a shootout in the street. <laughs> Don't mind us. In case you want to participate or hide whatever your vibe is. Right. So we were like, we need to probably move someplace a little more aggressive. Yeah. But it was oh, always kind of cool to be the like the cartel that's protecting this peaceful group of people. Oh, yeah, <laughs> right. Because, yeah, it's fair to say that in a post-apocalypse setting, post-apocalypse setting, uh, if you are a peaceful tribe, you are just opening yourself up for uh, being attacked if you don't have some kind of muscle around, right? Yeah, so we we made for some nice muscle. (laughs) I love that. But you guys have made the move to Undertown, uh, which your first one was 2023, is that right? Yeah, first Undertown camp was la- this this last event. And Under- Undertown has been famous at Wasteland Weekend for being where all the baddies, all the miscreants, <laughs> all, uh, <Yes>. all, <laughs> all the bad actors uh, set up shop. Um, do you guys feel like you fit in better there? I mean, they're some of our greatest clients. <laughs> it makes distribution <laughs> much easier. Um, yeah, we do. We kind of love the way Undertown does what they do and just um, they are the most lovable group of criminals. <laughs> so uh, it's very true. Right in. It's very true. I've, I've been saying for years, like at Wasteland, um, you know, y- you, you can be friendly with your friends, but you can be enemies with your best friends in a way. Like mm-hmm. it's so mm-hmm. much more fun 
when two tribes that know each other, like each other, are friends in the real world, um, when they're at war or or at some kind of opposition to each other, then just being friendly, um, you know, that it can be great to just hang out, but it can also be really great to set up some kind of odds so that you um, have some games to play. In a <laughs> well, way. that was us with the Dukes <laughs> in 2019 with Grimm's Exile because mm. we knew some of the dukes so well it was a lot of fun to be like we hate each other now <laughs> right and of course you guys had that outside the wall position and we had kind mm-hmm. of that prominent spot on main street and so there was a lot of um lore that's happened over the years about like outer wall tribes versus inner wall tribes uh and yeah. s- at some point there became um a uh a marriage proposal is that is that right uh yeah hot so Initially, hard to keep track of all of them. Grim was mm-hmm. going to propose to Fahrenheit, but Fahrenheit was involved with the nightmare. So Hotshot proposed to me. We got Wasteland engaged as like a political power move. Uh-huh. And then, of course, when Hotshot managed to retire this year, we had to break off the engagement because she no longer has any power to lend to the relationship. Oh. I, I I'm not even caught up on all of that. Holy crap! <laughs> Come on, make shift. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, when she announced her desire to retire, Magpie, I broke it off. I was like, "Well, you're not in charge of the Dukes anymore. You don't bring anything to the mm, table." Gotcha. So it's here's the opera. here's why you shouldn't let your engagements go on too long, ladies. Is you know yeah. things can happen, and then they end up getting broken up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Um, yeah, because uh, also this year we had a uh, hotshots murder mystery happen. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes. And, and you guys became one of the um, uh, likely suspects. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, though, <laughs> considering Fahrenheit helped get Grimm exiled. Listen, right. I made it so he didn't die, so you're welcome. Mm-hmm. I think that was actually me. <laughs> I love it. Um, it's really cool because so much of this lore has been going on for uh, over the course of years, right? Like um, the Dukes playing with the Boneyard Buzzards. I mean, now we're talking since 2019. That's five years of play that we've been having together. Uh, and mm-hmm. it's super yeah. fun. Yeah. I love it. It's I, also I remember... fun to come visit camp and be like, we're off right now. Let's just have a beer and chill. <laughs> oh, totally. And yeah. And be like, okay, it's time to fight it out. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. And, and y'all have been like mentors, basically, getting us like up to snuff to even be in the city theme. So that's been really cool and really appreciated. I think it was Monko and Hotshot were some of the first people to be like, you guys need to camp theme. Like your camp is good enough. Like you have a shtick. Like it's time to start applying to camp theme and join the, join the shenanigans with the rest of us. Yeah. I remember when they started talking about you guys and you know, we we got some friends outside the wall. We're going to go visit and everything. And um, you know, I, I've gotten to play more and more in the last few years. It, it keeps growing every year, right? Because I always, I'm always running a uh, video crew and like super busy and I don't always make it to every tribe. But, um, but yeah, by the time I made it to you guys, you looked awesome, really fun, good group of people uh, and the pickles. Yeah. The pickles. Uh, Deadwood's Pickle Farm. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. <laughs> Tell me where that came from. Was that just an idea that Deadwood came up with? Deadwood brought literally just showed up one year with a bunch of stuff that he had pickled and we were eating it yeah just we were (laughs) eating it like pickled cabbage and not quite kimchi because it's pickled in a different way uh pickled fruits so like his pickled plums and and peaches are like a huge hit so good and we decided to take some of the bottles that we weren't that weren't open yet and half bury them in the sand and we made like a makeshift a makeshift, makeshift. Uh, <laughs> sign that said Deadwood's Pickle Farm. And it became like people would come back and be like, can I trade for pickles? So now we have to like kind of set hours for Deadwood to be there to trade his pickles because uh-huh. otherwise we will all trade away his pickles for cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, And he'll come back and be like, where'd all the stuff go? I'm like, I got a cool gun. Yeah, yeah I gave nice. it to my friends. Yeah. I didn't know you were saving it for your friends. <laughs> oh my gosh, he but, gave me, the- oh, go ahead. He makes stuff for us every year, so at the end of Wasteland, we get to take home some of it, which is great. Right. Some of the fridge. I, I love it. He took me on the pickle tour. Oh, shoot. What was that? Two years ago? Two, something like that for the first time. And, um, oh, my gosh. He's got, you know, he starts you off. This is a traditional pickle. It's a it's a cucumber. Try that. We'll start there. And then he starts bringing out weirder and weirder. Not weird. Like, it's vegetables, right? It's just pickled vegetables, yeah. but they're not <laughs> cucumbers. And then, you know, 
as kind of like the icing on top at the end uh, i think it was pineapple or a peach Ooh. like pickled peaches and pineapples it's just like what what is happening right now um but those were some of my favorites and oh uh, yeah it's and like yeah. a pickled sommelier yeah yeah They're plus fancy. he's dressed uh almost perfectly like preston garvey from from fallout yeah yes. the uh the uh, another settlement needs help guy which annoys <laughs> the hell out of the internet like there's so many preston garvey um um memes out there that yeah and i love them all <laughs> <laughs> so fun. but yeah he's almost a spitting image for that character it's really fun we should have him go around and yeah and give people maps another settlement needs your help <laughs> yeah look at this floor planning i love it <laughs> oh yeah right yeah i think he definitely needs to have that where another settlement needs your help and he could just point people toward tribes that have other missions right yeah and kind of boost up some of those mm -hmm. things that's something i wish we got to do a little bit more of is like oh hey we sent you on a mission make sure you check out their missions when you get there mm -hmm. but right. we didn't get a handle on who all was doing what this year because we were so got to build our camp in the city for the first time <laughs> of course yeah and that can be yeah. Uh, quite quite a challenge too because in the city you kind of need to have not quite 360 degree um, mm -hmm. theme but it's pretty darn close did you guys have a challenge with that a little bit I mean Undertown is so good about closely packing each other in that your neighbors sort of cover your sides for you mm -hmm. um, and there was a lot of like oh you need something that you don't have I bet we have something that can help you cool um, which was really like it was really like moving into a neighborhood while all your neighbors like bring casseroles over because people were checking in like do you need help do you need to borrow something that's yeah, awesome so we were really taken care of that's great I've, I've heard that about undertown and we have that kind of on our block as well like um this year i had to run over to the uh, rec room to get some extra um what are they called the bolts the the screws Lag screws. lag screws yeah yep. yeah not to be confused with lag bolts lag screws nope. <laughs> we've been calling them lag bolts for years and then you know over the last year or two people have been like uh they're actually lag screws uh bolts won't do you much good well <laughs> okay okay cool what's bad is when somebody buys lag bolts because they hear us all say lag bolts when right. we mean lag screws and they're like i brought this and it's like that is not oh yeah that's yes. on me sorry i meant yeah. lag screw <laughs> yeah and for those that don't know uh what we're talking about here is it's kind of through trial and error it's been determined that lag screws if you get like good like 12 inch lag screws will actually hold in the um in wasteland valley way better than your typical spikes um like i used uh like timber spikes like 12 inch timber spikes for a long time to hold tents down um but the fact is you end up having to uh, dig like six inches down, get the hard pack, and then you can send those spikes down. But the lag screws hold because they get down mm -hmm. a little bit deeper. And plus the fact that they're um, ribbed for your pleasure um, yeah. means that they, they grip a little bit better. <laughs> and we just bring our impact driver. Right. We drive it in with an impact driver. So it's much quicker. It comes out with an impact driver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It makes for a much quicker setup. Yeah. Yeah. So much that's so that's why we're always talking about lag screws. They're, we, we, I mean, Wastelanders probably account for a good 10% of all lag screws sold in California. Yeah. <laughs> Especially California. if Ace Hardware has any in Cal City. Oh, my and gosh. you're like, oh, I forgot mine. And now yeah. they don't have yeah. any. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. I, fe I feel like every year we buy them out of something. I remember there was a year when people just kept buying out all their two by fours and um, definitely any any bolts and screws they have uh, we are always buying more of they they are such like Cal City has exactly what you need and nothing more <laughs> yes. yeah. I need five two by fours oh there's only five on the shelf yeah yeah, yeah. Right. but I mean it's it's the whole city like there's a, a handful of gas stations sure um, mm -hmm. you know there's there's a couple of great restaurants um, I don't think there's there's not like a grocery store, but there is enough convenience there and enough dollar stores now that you can stock up okay. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's very convenient that Cal City is within a half hour of sight. Um, and I know that they yes. appreciate the boost of Wastelanders coming to town a couple times a year now. 
the one time we had to go to the Ace in Cal City, they had on their sign, Welcome Wastelanders. We're like, yeah. oh, they know. <laughs> yeah. And that poor coffee shop, the one that was like on the way to Cal City from the new site, uh, they oh, ended up yeah. closing down, right? I think. I yeah. think so. I was yeah. really sad I never got to go. I know. Because, yeah, there's a Starbucks in town, but they were like the independent, like mm. nice coffee shop. And they had yeah. that sign out, like Welcome Wastelanders. And, and I think um, once or twice, there was even like a few Wastelanders trying to hit Midnight Line um, gathered in their parking lot. Yeah. yeah, which is kind of fun. It's a but, great spot uh, to like reconvene. Yeah, yeah, to- <laughs> totally. And I mean, who doesn't like a good cup of coffee? Especially like, all right, so Wasteland Coffee is always a treat because any coffee out there is is great. But mm. oh, but. we are Honey. really bougie about <laughs> coffee in our camp. <laughs> Tell me more, because so am I. It's so funny because we have like this giant, um, like uh, either Mongo brings it or i brought it or a couple of us actually have different coffee pots and it's like you know the um uh like hotel style just large carafe but Ooh, meanwhile yeah. i'll be having a french press in my camper um <laughs> and and I, you know you can only share with one or two people with that but <laughs> but yeah. every day i'm french press while everyone else is having their swill um or even like some people do instant and all that you know oh so we we have like two or three standard camp percolators mm-hmm. for like the Everyone. Overly, like the very strong coffee that just gets made in the morning. Right. We make a fancy instant coffee that is like having a fancy latte in the morning. Oh, hello! We have like a salted caramel one. We did a, like, a chocolate <laughs> a one. Tiramisu. Um, we then also brought these pre-made lattes that you add powdered milk to and use a milk frother. Oh, and, wow! Like get them started. So we had like frothed coffee this year yeah um but our camp is really big on like bougie bougie food I so understand. we had a yeah. keg of electrolytes this year and a keg of mimosas this year <laughs> <laughs> um that's great we did charcuterie one day yeah we did charcuterie like... for lunch where we just laid out a whole spread in front of the thrones and that's what we it. ate for lunch oh my gosh yes so we we're not ccb level because mm-hmm. they like invest their entire time in food. Yeah, that's kind of their thing. But we make a serious effort to eat well in the desert. Mm-hmm. I love yeah, that. we pre cook all of our food too, so I don't have to right. cook at the event. Uh-huh. So I'll be making like a double or a triple batch of like spam fried rice <laughs> for us to just reheat in the desert. Yeah. And it's amazing. So the good. thing we usually do cook on site is we make quesadillas either oh, one day or yeah. one evening. Yeah, family dinner. We bring a, there's these tortillas you can get at Costco that are still dough. So you cook them on site. Oh, yeah. Super fresh. Mm -hmm. Then we put cheese in, usually some mixture of like expensive cheese you probably shouldn't be melting in the desert for quesadillas. (laughs) And then everybody in camps eats it. We just churn out like 50 quesadillas and then we're giving them away to our neighbors Uh because we made too many. I love it. Oh, no. I love it. Right? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. You, you have hot food for me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, awesome. So um, I want to get into a little bit of like post-apocalyptic story. And we're going to touch back at Wasteland because a lot of story happens there. And we use a lot of the improv skills and story skills that we have to kind of like help shape some of that. Um, mm-hmm. But you guys both kind of work in story adjacent um, worlds in the real world. So I want to hear a little bit about that. Um, so Lady Fahrenheit, tell me a little bit about uh, your your work at Boom Studios. Yeah, um, I am currently a marketing coordinator over at Boom. um, And that meant uh, specifically for you, um, I got to put together a press list and I get to send out comps. Hey, look at that. Yeah, Um, I've got them all right here. I love love this story and I can't wait for the next one. It comes out like what, next week or something? (gasps) Yeah. Either this week or the upcoming week. Yeah. It's to keep track because when I'm working, I'm working months ahead. Mm. So I have to like censor myself sometimes. Of, like, oh, oh, yeah. Magpie, there's that thing coming out <laughs> in four months. <laughs> Trust me, it's going to be great. I um, can't tell you what mm-hmm. it is, but it's going to be great. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, we, got, we announced it today. Uh, it's coming out soon. Oh, that's um, so fun. But yeah, like I, I love being able to cater all of the. Um, the press lists to specific like niche creators. Um, yeah. And that has been like a really fun skill to, to hone. That's really fun. All right, so I do wanna talk a little bit about about this story in particular, 
uh, yeah. once, once Upon a Time at the End of the World. Um, because, all right, so I'm not a huge comic book guy. Uh, I, you're, I my, had like, you're my favorite kind of customer when I used to work in retail. Really? Not going to lie. Oh, yeah. All right. I, I yeah. can't wait to find out why. But... Um, <laughs> But uh, I had like a Richie Rich when I was a kid and and a, just a couple like that I got incidentally, you know, as gifts or something. Um, but, you know, it's not my go to st- story form. Um, mm-hmm. So I was just kind of collecting these for a little while. And then I decided, all right, so I'm going to sit down. I'm going to read these. Uh, and then once I started, I could not stop. Um, <laughs> so shoot, how would you describe this? It's it's like a a boy and a girl survivor. Both yeah, it's a, living a fun very kind of meet cute. Oh, kinda, what's that? Like, like a meet cute love story. Yeah, that just kind of grows into something bigger. Totally. Um, yeah, and yeah. I, I think the best part about it is that each story arc of each like moment of their life, like you have the young adult, you have the older adult, you have the old. They're each done by a different artist, so there's a specific mm. look to each story. And you can tell like where in time we are by who is doing the art, and it's that's so interesting. Cool. So I unique. like that. It's it's really neat um, collaboration in that mm-hmm. um, where you have different mm-hmm. styles all kind of combining to tell one story. Mm-hmm. I was Super just gonna cool. say it's a meet cute in the apocalypse, which is sort yeah. of important. Yeah, I mean that's just like my normal life, right? <laughs> <laughs> that definitely explains a lot of the buzzards' uh, shtick, doesn't it? Meet cute. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean. But, we recruited almost everybody who goes with us, at least the LA people from the comic book store we both used to work at. They're and that's where you guys nerds, met, right? D and D nerds, comic book nerds. That's how we found them and met them. Yeah, that's so <laughs> fun. And so you guys already had like some common ground to work off of when you got started. Mm-hmm. And we knew that they liked story and lore. We knew that they were. You kind of have to be heavily invested to be a comic book nerd. Uh huh. So we knew they were willing to be heavily invested. Yeah. Which Wasteland sort of takes. Oh, totally. Are you like me? Do you often feel yourself flagging around mile five as you trudge across the wasteland? Which is just when some ghouls or raiders jump you. That's usually a recipe for getting robbed, eaten, or, well, both. But it doesn't have to be. Because I found a little something that I want to share with my listeners. Jet. Jet is this tiny, easy to carry inhaler that will solve all your problems. It'll give you a rush, make you move faster, and help you focus. It's become part of my daily routine, and while there are a number of options out there, the only jet I trust is Buzzard's Jet. The Boneyard Buzzards are committed to the utmost quality when it comes to their jet. The buzzards source their ingredients from small batch suppliers and rigorously test their jet to ensure its safety and potency. There's no one out there doing it better or more ethically than the Boneyard Buzzards. If you want to try Buzzards Jet and give yourself a boost, I have an exclusive code for my listeners. Just visit the Boneyard Buzzards camp and say, Ready, Set, Jet, and you won't have guns thrust in your face. That's Ready, Set, Jet to avoid gunpoint interrogation. Jet is a fictional narcotic and is for entertainment purposes only. Now, D&D's gotten a lot of traction lately. I don't know if it's just the internet talks more about it or if it's just cooler to be a nerd these days. Um, but, you know, D&D is everywhere. Uh, and I think it's just a lot more accepted. Like, I think uh, the idea that D&D is like the devil's playground to the old guard yeah. uh, is over and done with. Like, people have figured out, like, uh, it's just a game uh, mm-hmm. and just just fun ways to hang out with your friends and tell stories. But um, but I see it everywhere. Um, it's, it's in memes everywhere. Um, uh, RPG lit has grown as a storytelling uh, uh, genre. Um, and... And... I think people are just more and more excited about it. Of course, some some Wastelanders work for Hero Forge, which makes miniatures. The community is like super. I actually just got to work on a documentary for them too that was just wrapping up um, mm-hmm. a, about their about their new stuff, their new face designer, um, which is really cool. Um, but anyway, so the whole idea of like tabletop role playing games uh, is bigger than ever, and you guys uh, both kind of come from that world. So tell me a little bit about how uh, the Tabletop RPG and an event 
that's real world and immersive like wasteland go together so it was for us specifically it was a lot easier to get our people to get into a character because they were mm. used to that at a table, right? They're mm -hmm. used to being like, I'm gonna take elements of my own personality and some other things that I like from fiction or media and meld them together and just create a persona. But the, the biggest, I guess for me, the biggest thing that TTRPG does for Wasteland is the ability to collaborate. Mm. So, Wait, oh, TT, tabletop. Tabletop I'm, RPG. I'm still learning yeah. all this shorthand. <laughs> <laughs> When you play a video game, even when you're sort of playing online with friends, you're playing your story in the game. But when you sit at a table with people online or in person, you have to know when to give mm. moments to other people and let them shine. And you mm -hmm. have to be like, this is really important to this person, so I'm going to adjust what I want to help them get what they need. Mm -hmm. And that's been a huge tool for, I mean, at least for us at Wasteland, because we're so often targeting the new Wastelander. We want right. the newbie to come to us. Right. So we always have to come from a mindset of like, how do I help this person win? Mm -hmm. How do I help this person get what they need? Even if it like might make my character die or it might make my character have to like surrender, but... Mm. We're, we're willing to lose <laughs> so that other people can have a good time. And right. that's a tabletop role-playing thing. Mm -hmm. mm, oh, I like that. I like that. Um, yeah, because uh, it's interesting. So we send people on missions. Often they're pretty innocuous, like deliver this thing. Um, yeah. And, or bring back something else or go find this person. Um, but then as a lot of the tribes have kind of push for is as you do more and more missions for them they get more complicated and a little bit more story might come into play um like i said with um hot shots murder mystery this year uh a lot of that was for the dukes to play ourselves but we also mm -hmm. incorporated um some other aspects of it that we could actually send some some of the other wastelanders to do like they could go hey go check out this tribe over here and see what they say. And then they would have like little alibi chits that they could bring back, basically saying, all right, we can say that they are not the murderer. Um, and sometimes it was as simple as like, you know, here's our alibi, you know? Um, yeah. But there was that whole story element so that people could participate in this larger thing that was kind of more for the adult, I don't want to say the adults to play, but more for the tribes to play within themselves. Um, mm -hmm. But it was actually a really good time. And then we had, of course, the big reveal on Saturday night when the music was way too loud for a <laughs> reveal. <laughs> something, something we learned about, um, about big role playing on Main Street is don't do it at night because the stage just will yeah. blast you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, did you guys incorporate any of that into some of your games this year? We did, um, I guess not necessarily this year, but last year, twenty, this year being like this most recent event, 2022, we ended up with somebody's relic we weren't supposed to have. Uh -huh. Like somebody was bartering and it got bartered to them and oh, wow. they showed up with this golden tooth. And then the Teef Hunters, which were a brand new tribe that year, showed up and go, you have our relic, how do we get it back from you? They were like... This wasn't how we intended this game to go. We have no idea how it got to you. And we're like, well, how do you want to get the relic back? Do you want to like oh, come yeah. in guns blading? You want to negotiate? Mm -hmm. So they got to take down like an established tribe. And we actually got some of the Dukes to come and help us <laughs> be like dead bodies in the streets so oh, that this nice. new tribe could like steal their relic back from this big group of chem, <laughs> like chem dealers. And it was entirely for them and their group to kind of like get into Wasteland. Mm. Um, it wasn't really like a big outward facing storyline, but it's one of our favorite moments from 22 cool. because they got to have this big shining like showdown in the streets and like people are coming out of their tents to watch it. And it's just this brand new group going, cool, we're... <laughs> We're killing people in Wasteland. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, so many tribes, uh, especially new tribes, always, are always asking, like, how do we get more involved? And that's exactly it, is just, you know, start shaping some stories and um, mm -hmm. and coming up with you events that you, can, that you can do, either, like, in your camp, like, host anything, um, you know, host a show, host a, uh, an open mic, do whatever, you know, do whatever you're capable of doing, but then also get out in the streets and interact is a big thing yeah. um, because you're not going to come in with a name. 
you know, people, there's a lot of tribes. There's over a hundred tribes now. Like, and if you, if you try to flaunt your name and, and raise your clout without being a part of the community and like adding to it, uh, it's going to fall flat. But yep. once you start like interacting, like get in, get in touch with some of the other tribes. They don't even necessarily need to be the older tribes. They could be other new tribes and just start kind of creating your own storylines. And that makes a big difference. Yeah, that that's probably 2016. We met a group called the Restorationists who now are mm -hmm. our across the street neighbors, some of our most favorite people. Mm -hmm. And they just set up a church in the middle of nowhere <laughs> and started their own thing. And now they're one of the like but they were offering a service to the community. They were making people's costumes look amazing and distressed and mm -hmm. baptized in dirt. So they just put out something into the community that was beneficial. And yeah. now they like have the status and cloud of like, they are the group that you can see like right by the Thunderdome. Right. Because their church is just off the Thunderdome. Yeah. Um, they also have the benefit of being like really humble and amazing folks. So Total, that helps, right? yeah. but they got out what they put in. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, we took a lot of notes from them. Uh, yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah. We just saw the way that they put all their energy into what they did as opposed to like being, I hate this term, but being wasteland famous, mm -hmm. they put the energy into like building something specific for the community Yeah. and it paid off for them. And then, we kind of saw the switch from H Park to the new site. Everything was a little disjointed and uh -huh. there wasn't as much for newbies to do because mm. everybody was still kind of getting their bearings in right. the new spot. And we're like, well, that's what we can do. We can just be specifically always targeted at new people. Yeah. So we want our missions to always feel like the newbie gets to explore parts of Wasteland. That's great. And, like meet and introduce themselves to people. Yeah, and and I know from from the first years they get to play these games, they absolutely love them. And you know, a, a lot of wasteland is. Um, I, I don't want to paint everyone as neurodivergent, although there is a huge population of people that don't <laughs> find themselves fitting into uh, normal everyday life, um, but have a hard time talking to new people or with crowds or. Um, or even having to like improvise anything or even come up with their own name sometimes. Uh, and so these games that they can come play, give them a reason to, to not just participate, but also talk to new people. Um, and uh, I, I think that it's helped quite a bit, like foster this next generation of wasteland, w mm -hmm. wastelanders, you know? Um, Cause people can come in and within one year they can, they can be a part of the community. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people, um, especially after they do some of our missions and see how we do Wasteland, um, say that the idea of being an NPC, which is something we try to make sure is really important in our group, uh -huh. um, they really like that. And they're like, how do I become an NPC yeah. to help other people like you helped me or like this other group helped me? Like, I want to contribute more to the community. Yeah. And those sorts of like feedbacks are mm -hmm. just really cool here. Yeah, definitely. And one thing I, I will kind of add to that is if you do want to be an NPC, you got to really think about the outcomes of what your missions are bringing people to. Because if there is no, um, if there's no highlight at the end, if there is, if there is no reward, or if it kind of falls apart because you didn't think about how X would interact with Z, um, it'll make people not necessarily want to do those missions again. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. which um, is why D D is great. Exactly. Yeah, totally. For that. Yeah, because uh, and again, this is you know our our big thing this year was Hot Shots murder, um, but we spent months plotting that out um, and figuring out like, all right, how does this interact with this? How do these tribes come in and play? Um, you know, how much does any one character have to devote to this? And and like even scheduling became an issue. Um, but yeah, tell me a little bit about how D and D can help set up like some bullet points for. Uh, creating some lore. I mean, it definitely helps with the, if you've never LARPed before, but have just played D&D, &D, it's kind of a good like baby step into mm. what Wasteland can be. <laughs> yeah, it's D&D it's &D on your feet, right? So yeah. instead of traveling in game, you're walking from place to place. But I think for us, it helps us create better quest strings. Mm -hmm. This last year we did dead drops. So it was like perceived danger you had to go sneak in get a thing mm -hmm. and return it and you get our fun like jet as rewards um oh show me show me a little bit closer are we gonna do the like, i love oh, these wow. yeah <laughs> oh yeah 
Oh, very nice. <laughs> did you just tap on it? I like, did. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm learning from TikTok. Perfect. Oh yeah. But on in previous years, we've been like, great. You have to take this to so and so. You need to get something from them. They will make you do something in order to receive what you're getting, and mm-hmm. then they end up. In years past, we've been like the end of this quest is getting into the Skullduggers VIP lounge. The end of this quest mm. is getting into Coolcrest. Yeah. So that the newbie is seeing a place that they might not see in their first year because right. it's hard to take it all in. And unless somebody tells you there's a secret bar over there, yeah, you probably don't know. Yeah. <laughs> or like complete that tried specific mission. Yeah. Or this exactly. is like, a, ooh, go have a sneak peek at that VIP room. And then tell us about it when you're done. Yeah, we do a lot of like, what information did you gather while you were there? Like, do you think you could become a member and tell us about it and tell us what happens in the secret back room at the Mm -hmm. the Duke's camp? Um, And that makes them want to go do these things that further integrates them into the community. Oh, yeah, because you kind of create the mystery, which creates the want, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. yeah, it's really fascinating because when you think about story beats, right, there has to be like an inciting incident, which, you know, for most of these, it's just, we want the thing, go get us the thing. Yeah. That's the inciting incident. <laughs> um, but then there has to be like the trials and tribulations, which is the quest of, of how do you how do you go drop off this thing? Um, we, we infamously um, had a battle with the... Um, with the Farlanders this year that went all the way to the Thunderdome because um, Bridger, who is a yeah. wonderful improviser and has an incredible character, uh, demanded to see guns that that our uh, delivery men were delivering in a closed case. Uh, and of course, it was merely a prop. When they opened the case, there were no guns inside, uh, but Bridger wasn't going to let that slide. He made them go back to our camp and bring guns. And that just made it all the more real for them, right? Uh, mm-hmm. They found themselves not just playing uh, a silly drop-off game, but now there are these real characters with real consequences in wasteland because of that one little improv you know it's just really fun mickey bang bang did that to us once (laughs) we were negotiating a truce between us and the dead men and we had a prop case and the dead men were like well we won the war we got their stuff and then mickey opens it and there's nothing in there because it was a prop (laughs) case And Mickey's like, clearly you didn't. And then we pulled out all the stuff because we brought it with us in case the case got opened Uh and got to turn the tables on the dead men and be like, actually, you didn't. That was a decoy. (laughs) But all because Mickey was like, I'm opening this box that was clearly not supposed to be open. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Yeah, we try to get away with a lot, don't we? I mean, no one wants to carry around a heavy case, so you try to make it a little bit lighter. Um, Yeah. And of course, there's always the worry that if you put stuff in something that someone takes away, uh, that stuff might not make it back. So you have to yeah, kind of like, right. be a little bit cautious about what you send out into the universe, right? Um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 so fun. Oh my gosh. Uh, so let's talk about a little bit of like outside wasteland about what makes a good wasteland, uh, a good post-apocalypse story. Uh, and I was just thinking, I was trying to like narrow this down, right? Because what are all post-apocalypse stories about? Generally, they're like the same stories as you find that are not post-apocalypse, but they're in the post-apocalypse setting much like something could be a Western or be a, a fantasy story, you know, it's still kind of like ideas of human interaction, right? Yeah. Um, and so survival is obviously a big part of it. Like, you know, most post-apocalypse stories have a decline in population. And so <laughs> like survival is a big part of it. We see that in uh, basically everything. I can't think of a post-apocalypse movie that's not about survival in one way or another. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Like there's never yeah. a post apocalypse story with with plenty. Yeah, no. It's not right? like oh everybody's gone. I'm still here and everything's great. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, the supermarkets are full. We're all set now. <laughs> <laughs> um and then there's like a breakdown of mora- morality or new norms or a lack of order which comes up in a lot of things. Mm. Uh, and so that's where, you know, tribes like the Dukes of the Nuke and the Boneyard Buzzards can create new order. Yeah. <laughs> right. So we're kind of playing into that at Wasteland where like there is no mass government. And yes, like Wasteland City has the elite guards that have more or less just because of the way we play have been kind of played down more so mm-hmm. in in the more recent years. Um, 
that's a story we need then the rise the rise of the elite guard as yeah. they retake like dominion mm. over wasteland city see we jared if you're listening i know you are sometimes <laughs> we, we we can play with this a little bit like the elite guard take back the city from undertown Ooh. specifically giving the dukes Ooh. of the nuke hey, an upper hey, hand hey, would be fantastic <laughs> There was the year that Undertown was outside the gates. Remember that? That was uh, 2016? Yeah. I think that was before we started really, oh, okay. like, getting into the lore of everything. Mm. Mm-hmm. That was really our... understanding. That was your first year. Yeah, and we did and a lot like, of oh, mail on. delivery, bounty honey, uh-huh. hunting, like, meeting people. Yeah. Um, but we have heard that some of those stories about Undertown, like, going to war with the city. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it, was, it was an interesting one, because that was the year of... Uh, the Duke's Tower falling, uh, and also not having enough space in camp. Uh, se- several things happened that year because of the big shakeup uh, that yeah. that um, Wasteland Valley fixed because H Park was just, it was too full. We, yeah. we had outgrown oh, yeah. that park a long time ago. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, a couple other themes that pop up, the importance of human connection, which I think is mm-hmm. always uh, in play at Wasteland, where we're you know, just celebrating being alive, and the inevitability of death. And that's something that. But, but hope. There's a bunch of hope in there see, too. See now that's yeah. where that's where it's at. Because when you think about like yeah. the Mariner in Waterworld, you know he's he's lost all hope in humanity, being that he's a mutant and um, isolated and disregarded mm-hmm. and uh, demified in a lot of ways. Um, so yeah, hope comes up a lot. I think that's a big mm-hmm. thing in like Fury Road too. Is you know yeah. he, the the whole movie opens with uh, with. Uh, What's the line? I why am I forgetting it? Hope is a mistake. Oh, we're gonna right? get in so much trouble. I know. Well, it's happened. Well, you, you can only keep <laughs> so much of the movie in your head at all times. But yeah, yeah. Hope, hope is a mistake, right? Mm-hmm. If you can't fix what's broken, you'll drive. You'll go crazy. Go mad. Fuck. Yeah. Just here's here's my wasteland card. <laughs> <I give up. laughs> um, but uh, but yeah. Do, do do you think we see that kind of stuff popping up within our tribe lore? all these like greater post-apocalypse themes i i kind of do mostly because it bleeds in from the community right like mm-hmm. talking about a huge population of the community's neuro spicy neurodivergent like <laughs> you're finally finding people who are weird in the same way that you're weird yeah so there's that in like real world human connection that you make with people you probably see once a year for five days in the desert right yeah yeah so i think so much of that bleeds into the stories that we tell because we're Mm -hmm. kind of celebrating the experience of wasteland in general Mm -hmm. right and like embracing what you truly feel comfortable both in and dealing with um I feel like that just opens it up to being a little bit more honest with everyone, even mm-hmm. though you're all like playing pretend in this weird setting. Um, yeah, it's weird. It's weird how comfortable I am out there and how right. like, I feel like me in yeah. the desert yeah. wearing weird face paint and <laughs> like feathers and skulls and stuff. I don't right. know. <laughs> yeah. And, and, we and, so rarely get to find our people like we're you're lucky when you find the people who like get mm-hmm. you right like that's such a a huge theme of post-apocalyptic media but all media yeah and we get to in the desert the people who return for a second year of wasteland like it's like oh yeah you're one of us mm-hmm. welcome back <laughs> yeah yeah and it's interesting i mentioned new societal norms and we definitely have that at, at wasteland right because the general rules of living in a polite society um, while while we're not being unpolite to each other, but it's a very different way of interacting with people. But you also get to like really explore your own boundaries in a way that in, in like in the non judgmental terms, um, and um, you know kind of explore who you are when you don't have those same expectations you do back home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you're not putting on a face to go to work every day, you can just be a little bit more honest about like what you're willing to put up with. Yeah. Because you're on vacation and you want to have a good time. So you're willing to say, you know, that's not for me, but I'm going to go have my fun doing this other thing. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Um, All right. So let me see. Uh, Magpie, you work for a very interesting company uh, that ties into like D&D games and immersion. Tell me a little bit about that. 
So I'm the company manager for Cantrip Candles. Um, we've been around since 2017, and the the owner and creator, Christoph, it's kind of a silly story, but he was running a D and D game at his table. They were in a bar fight. Somebody knocked over a beer. Like the characters were in a bar fight, but one uh-huh. of the players knocked over a beer, and the smell of spilled oh. alcohol change the vibe right because you're in a bar fight and then beer spilled (laughs) so he started making candles to create ambiance for gaming that's really cool now like he started doing it out of his house Uh now we have a storefront and like a manufacturing center and there's about six of us on the team now and we're pretty small but everybody is really dedicated to this idea that we create better immersion not just for tabletop gaming but for video gaming and some people find that it's great for like crafting or if you're Mm -hmm. like reading a fantasy book and you're kind of wanting to lean into the the whole feel of the experience yeah scent is a whole thing that changes like scent ties to our memories like it's such a powerful tool right that we kind of play with Um, So we make cool fantasy candles. Um, I grabbed a couple that I had at home and some of Amanda's, but like we make fun fantasy candles that are realm of, this is realm of shadows. So it's like designed for like your shadow fell kind of like dark campaigns. Yeah. We also make like potions. So we have a magic potion, a healing potion cool, and a stamina potion for like your, zelda style like feel of gaming right Uh uh-huh um all right if you had to describe like what those smell like so magicka potion is pretty lavender based okay and uh dragon's blood which is kind of a type of incense so it's spicy Mm. and calming at the same time it's very that makes like it transports and changes the mood Uh uh-huh um realm of shadows is pomegranate slate so like wet stone oh and uh, a little bit of star anise so it has like a strangeness to it so Mm, like an absinthe mm -hmm. sort of vibe interesting because it is supposed to transport you to like the underworld like so the pomegranate helps like lean into that with some of the mythology about pomegranates in the underworld oh fun um so we make choices very deliberately about Uh what we feel like an area would smell like and we draw from all sorts of different inspiration and a lot of our scents are like true to a place so we've got a scent called walk in the woods that smells like the angeles national forest cool because it's our forest nearby it's where we go walking in the woods yeah um so so far the ones that you've mentioned smell like it sounds like they would just kind of smell nice for your house do you have any it's like you know i'm thinking about that that spilled beer which is normally yeah. not not a scent you want it's like you know, we're in a dive bar and you're just sniffing a bar mat right um is it kind of like uh do you know the um the wizard uh jelly bellies that some yeah. of them were like uh, you don't the, want this in your mouth flavor beans that you don't yeah. yeah do you have any candles that are just a little bit uh, more on the offensive side of things Yes, so because we want accurate scents, we have things like Den of Thieves, which is great. Some people really love it, but it's uh-huh. like like red wine that's like uh, mm-hmm. it's got that strong red wine note, which can be overpowering in like a sense if you're like in a tight space. Like mm-hmm. it's got a, a super strong smoke note. Ooh. So you're in like a smoky bar oh, where people so are cool. drinking and that is great it sets a great ambiance but Uh it is not always pleasant (laughs) by the time you are done sitting in that bar for a couple of hours negotiating with some rogues and thieves i was just thinking about how like red wine can smell wonderful but talking to someone who's drunk on red wine is not always the best yeah yeah (laughs) well the table next to you is just puffing cigars (laughs) everywhere wow we we also have like dungeon depths which smells like a cave system whoa like musty yeah so it's got a must it's got uh, a watery scent because it like you're a wet cave system Uh it's also got a hint of black powder because you need to have like a little bit of point of view in everywhere that you go it gives the dm a little bit of scent to play off of like oh oh, it smells like black powder in here where does that Mm. come from Mm -hmm. who's stockpiling that and why Uh uh-huh but it's 
Some people say that one smells like cucumber. The people who like really like it, they're like, it's refreshing. It smells like cucumber. And other people are like, this smells like a musty cave. Wow. You've had a taste of Eli's cat oil lip balm on your lips, but now you can have Eli's cat oil all over your entire body. Introducing Eli's cat oil wash bars to help you bathe more and stink less. These sample bags include three bars of all natural soaps. There's the salt flats made with sea salts, burnt embers with activated charcoal, and Eli's signature scent we call One Last Shot, with the smell of sweet sandalwood bourbon, all in a dirty, rust-stained, uh, decorated gift bag from our ally in survival, Wildling. Eli's cat oil wash bars for when the world is destroyed, but your hands are clean. Available now in the Apocalypse Outpost. We have a jungle candle that um, is recent and came out last year. It has that great petrichor note, which is wet earth after the rain. Mm. So kind of that ozone-y, but also like wet, like rich earth. It also has a strong fungus note. So you just stuck your face in like a bunch of mushrooms. Uh huh. It feels very immersive. You're in the jungle, but it's also just a little weird to be like yep i want my whole room to smell like mushrooms i love that is it hard to source these like non-perfumey scents like it you know it seems like the scents for like different fruit and flowers and and different greenery should be really uh easy to find is it tougher to find the scent of rain or the scent of wet stone it's more difficult um we have a myriad of providers that like suppliers that we work with which not allowed to tell you about but we have a lot of suppliers that we work with that we work really hard to source things that we feel like are accurate that that people will enjoy but also will make you we want the candles to make you feel something because it's about immersion it's about experience it's not just i smell like vanilla my house smells like vanilla yeah it's so fascinating against vanilla it's delicious i've i've heard um, and I have not tested this, that like Disneyland um, is full of all sorts of like smell vision as you walk around, like in oh, the I different bet. areas, they will actually pump different scents into the air to give you the feeling of like being in a different land. Uh, and this kind of sounds a lot like that. Yeah, we've done a couple of things where we've helped like immersive theaters, like just mist some smell into their space so that they can mm-hmm. kind of set a tone. Um, we love playing with things like that. I love it. All right. So tough question for you. If I were to make a scent that was wasteland based, what kind of smells would you think had to go into that candle? And Fahrenheit, you can play in this too. Yeah. Amanda has taken our candle making class. So she kind of has an idea of how all this works. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've done it twice now. <laughs> um, we, if I was making that candle, I would find like a wet sand smell. So like an earthy smell that was uh-huh. dry. Okay. Um, I said wet sand. I didn't. You said wet dry sand. sand yeah. like, a, okay. like that crunchy dirt we get at Wasteland or mm-hmm. even like going so far as to get like the red smell from the Colorado desert. Like, I don't know if you've been down okay. there because that has such a strong smell. It would, mm. it really like says desert. Mm-hmm. Um, you could get some liveliness out of like a sagebrush scent, just uh-huh. a little bit. Uh, I would probably get some sort of smoke note in there. Maybe not truly campfire, but like something closer to exhaust. I'm thinking, yeah, exhaust, burning rubber. Or even like tobacco. <laughs> yeah, some yeah. like kind of tobacco, tobacco mm, is a great mm-hmm. augment for that. Um, yeah. But exhaust, dry sand, gasoline which mm. has that kind of like, right. I mean, I love the smell of gasoline, oh, not great. everybody, but that kind of like bright. I liked it better note. when it was leaded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'd probably pull some of that gunpowder that we already use for something else mm, mm-hmm. because you want that, Wasteland's about the people, right? So you want it to yeah, smell yeah. like the people that live at right. Wasteland. Yeah. You could even get deeper into like cloth and tents and that sort mm-hmm. of feel, but I was just going with the environment, gunpowder, gasoline, that dry, dry desert sand. Right. Some smoke and some sagebrush. Mm-hmm. Sounds awesome to me. We should um, we should talk about this after. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> um, but yeah, everyone, uh, like almost all Wastelanders have the universal experience of when they pull their gear pack open, getting ready for the next event. Um, just that little bit of like wasteland dust in the in the box. Plus, I don't know, maybe some maybe like micro molds from the desert or something, <laughs> yeah. or maybe it's just like the burlap and the canvas that make all of our tents and stuff. Um, there is that very particular scent that gets you very excited about getting back out there every year, and you don't really smell it necessarily on site, right? Because you you get used to it after a day or two. Um, but yeah, as soon as you open your your pack, you start going through those costumes. You're right back there. Yeah, there. There is something specific, though, about, like, we distress our fabrics, right? And a lot mm -hmm. of us use, like, try to use natural stuff to distress our fabrics, although I've yeah. dipped into paint and spray paint, too. Uh -huh. <laughs> but we use, like, a, a lot of diatomaceous earth to kind of mm -hmm. give our fabrics that dusty sort of thing. So we get that mm -hmm. smell when we open our packs. Yeah, that fuller's earth and, like, our, and our spray. I think it's the smell of <laughs> wool for me. Like Wool? Yeah, because the it's such a moisture wicking fabric like all my mm. nighttime stuff is made out of wool because wet or dry it really like keeps you warm and uh some of the old like i keep thinking about the smell of warmart right like the smell of camp oh right wool yeah of like moldering fabric that's what my <laughs> kit feels like it smells like every time i open it even though <laughs> i put it away clean oh yeah like i wash it before i put it away but you can't can't ditch that smell right yeah it just sticks around um yeah I, I mean to to the to the bad and the good right it's like yeah it is very particular to the event um although i'm interested like uh you know i've started collecting a neotropolis um costuming kit now uh, do you think it'll end up smelling the same or will the different like less natural um fabrics will, will will those take on a different scent uh, since we're not distressing it in the same way i mean it's still distressing but not in the same ways um I'm, I, it'll be interesting to see if neotropolis has a different scent when i go to open up that pack i bet you'll get more metallic and like mm. kind of uh and like the not plasticky nylon. but like nylon yeah. or vinyl notes mm. because like some so much more of your neo stuff is is newer stuff fabrics like synthetics right. yeah <laughs> still smells yeah. like the amazon packaging that i got it's <laughs> <laughs> no you're exactly right because yeah it's a it's kind of like that christmas morning scent when you open up all the toys and it's like the packaging and the and the batteries packs and the electronics like running for the first time mm -hmm. uh that's yeah. neotropolis <laughs> yeah you need that uh electric like burn yeah. wire smell yeah yeah, yeah. And yeah and like when the, you first turn like, on a, a remote control car what was yeah. that like the like tarps and mm. the steel from all of the the scaffolding right yeah you get that little bit of metal like on your hands as you walk around and stuff mm -hmm. and so now i know what a neotropolis candle would smell like there you go look <laughs> yeah. at us we're being so productive today it smells it smells <laughs> like the back offering. room at a radio shack <laughs> actually hmm. well fantastic um all right so what else? What uh, what's going on in the future with the Boneyard Buzzers? You guys got anything in the works for next year already? Ooh, we seeded something in 2023 last year. If you were a newbie who did our mission, you had to retrieve some quantum materials for us, some glow in the dark, oh, glowing supplies. So we're looking to play with that, update our jet <laughs> formula. Uh -huh. We have to stay ahead of the competition. We part of what creates the danger, though, is the competition. We had Black Ash Syndicate basically bomb us with Jet this year, <laughs> and we got Jet from uh, we got White Rabbit Jet from this new group. We presume it's a new group. We didn't get to meet them, but their packaging and their whole thing was really cool. Um, so we've got to keep updating the Jet. Uh -huh. We do a unique color every year for. We have a few people who collect them pretty seriously. <laughs> uh -huh. So we're getting our new stuff in line and we're pretty serious about our jet fabrication. Like we don't just 3D print them, we hand paint them. We, we, I love it. We actually use the metal canisters because it gives everything mm -hmm. and yeah. makes the prop feel real. Um, so we've got to upgrade our production a little bit more to kind of get this <laughs> kind of like quantum feel yeah oh yeah right but we're already kind of starting to experiment which so fun. still and means we'll be making jet 
on September 15th in the middle yes. of the night frantically <laughs> on our, getting ready for the event. But that's yeah, like, I saw you guys post oh last year about like, here's here's some jet like in the works yeah. as we not. try to get everything ready. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's funny because you, it you, you want to be able to like give people, you know, the props and be like, here, this is yours now. But mm -hmm. you go through a lot. I mean, there's uh, five, just shy of 5,000 people that all want a jet by the time the weekend's over. <laughs> we usually go through reliably two to 300 jet in a weekend wow, in, wow. A, in the course of the event. Uh -huh. um, and that number goes up almost every year. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's believable. We try to make like close to 500 ish so that we have some for next year. And it's like, cool, mm -hmm. we just have to, yeah. Uh, if we always have a little bit left over, we have some padding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a lot of CO2 ca canisters to uh, collect. Do you, do you know someone that's a barista or something yeah, like that? We've, we've got several barista friends who have dropped off several boxes of their barista supplies. Uh -huh. um, we're set for a while. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. We have many nice. friends. We basically collect it as often as we can so that yeah. we always have a surplus. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's, it's part of what makes our jet fun is that whole feel. The metal like feels cold in mm -hmm. your hand and everything feels right. weighty. So it's we have to keep getting it and like keep stocking uh -huh. up. Yeah. Although yeah. the year we took a break, so 2020 was down 21 nobody was interacting or doing anything. So we didn't collect mm -hmm. anything. So we bought a bunch of them and had to just empty them. Just sitting there with like a whipped cream, like a hand, like a homemade whipped cream thing and just emptying, just emptying containers. Them out. Yeah. Oh my, my gosh. My roommate sat out on our balcony, just emptying containers, wearing a respirator. Just like, this is miserable, but here yeah. we are. Because wow. we didn't have any and we had to come to 2021 Wasteland <laughs> with supply. <laughs> Oh so my was gosh. Our, was that our first year in theme? Yeah, first year officially in theme. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So no pressure. That's wild. Yeah. It's amazing what people go through. I know that like the, the casino every year they are stamping uh, bottle caps, trying to up their supply. They, they can never make enough. I mean. Well, and the, but, uh, the wasteland, the undertown bank has to make all the Coyote Canyon dollars. And right. Give them all the official stamps. COA mm -hmm. takes that on. Uh, Children yeah. of Aesir. And they printed so much money this year. <laughs> <laughs> and good thing they did because there was a lot of money sh changing hands especially during the knife fights oh yeah that was yeah. so fun to have uh moth eater doing the under bookie thing it's uh -huh. so cool <laughs> taking yeah. bets on knife fights yeah so busy i actually wanted to talk to him and see how that went because i can imagine just how complicated that was i don't speak numbers so like <laughs> We just handle the chems. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. Make sure people um, are right. happy. And so Jet comes out of the Fallout video game series. Mm -hmm. Did have you guys stayed true to that? Because in the game, Jet was basically like uh, basically like getting an adrenaline shot, but you could get addicted to it, so it gave you like um, extra energy, extra damage. It was kind of like amplified everything about you temporarily, mm -hmm. but you did have to be very careful about getting addicted to it. Is your Jet the same as in the video game? Absolutely, because addiction makes for better customers. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You keep getting me on these spit takes. <laughs> I mean, we That's we we play with the color and like flavor of our jet just so that it's new and so people have something to collect. But uh -huh. the classic is like the red jet canister. I color mm -hmm. match. Of course. Yeah. Took time you color matched to it? color match the red and to color match <gasps> the two different grays oh to the game. Yeah. So like that's all hand painted and we were really uh -huh. careful about trying to get this as close to game accurate as we can manage. Wow. And then of course we make it grody and gross so that it's not uh -huh. clean. Yeah. Yeah, it's clean naturally. Clean. We can't have we can't have clean. Send it over to the restorationist. Here, you guys paint this. <laughs> <laughs> we got 300 of these things. Put them in put them in line. That's so funny. Um yeah, I love seeing them around. There's there's so many really unique props that uh, get moved around Wasteland, and you know it it was years in before I realized like yes, Wasteland large scale looks amazing. Like the camps look great, people's costumes look amazing, the cars are very detailed. Well, a lot of them are, not all of them. Um, uh, but 
when you like take a second to like look at what's on tribes shelves and what's in their pockets and what's around their neck like a lot of this stuff has a lot of time put behind it and it's just really cool to see the details from the biggest things all the way down to the smallest things oh yeah absolutely i think one of my favorite costume bits is i have a bandana that gemini made gemini from samoda and it's just so beautifully detailed and looks hand done and it's yeah and those little pieces that you trade for with other people who make cool stuff just make the best costume augments Mm -hmm. and you can tell a lot like you can almost tell a story with the accessories that you put onto your costume and that's kind Mm -hmm. of something that we encouraged our group like okay cool you've made this backstory are you going to actually tell people that probably not how about take that backstory Mm. see how you can implement these details into your gear like cool you used to be a trader do you have some patches from your other trading excursions or maybe some more exotic wares that you like attach to your uh your mantle or something i think rooster's one of our better rooster's one of the founding members of the buzzards Mm -hmm. and he's rebuilding it because it got stolen but he has a whole like cut of the story of rooster and it's like little things from fallout easter eggs and like a big back patch with a rooster on it and it's like very very minutely detailed and the whole piece all like together just looks amazing Mm. yeah he's definitely i love that yeah super cool and it's interesting because as you go year after year um a lot of people's characters are actually getting greatly influenced by being a part of wasteland and so your story like the things that you collect or the things that you win the 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 people that you kill um yep. <laughs> can all become part of your costume and of course you know year after year if you're wearing the same pieces they're going to wear and tear kind of naturally mm-hmm. uh, yeah and so yeah your story does get embedded in your costume which is really cool really cool um all right so our chat didn't quite go where I thought it would today. We ended up um, talking a little bit more about immersion, which I absolutely love. I think it's super <laughs> cool. Um, and you know, between you know the sense that you that you're helping create with these candles that are meant for D and D, but also like all the immersion of Wasteland and uh, just how it takes people. Because um, I've mentioned this before in the early years. Uh, it was kind of described as being a background extra in a Mad Max movie, mm-hmm. but more recently, it's more like being the um the the playable character in a video game where yeah. you're much more involved and it's much more open to you to kind of craft your own story and um and be the lead character be the hero in whatever kind of story you want to tell and and it's it's um you know tribes like the boneyard buzzards and um and the restorationists that help you get more and more immersive into that world to where you are you are in the post-apocalypse. You are a character for a few days. And of course, making it accessible to whether you want to be 100% in character the whole time or not, it doesn't matter. You're yeah. still in the world. There's no escaping it. You are in the post-apocalypse. Um, and uh, I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> this this crazy thing we do. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. This little thing. Well, and yeah. <laughs> I just love the buy-in from all the groups, right? Like you get on the ground and everybody's buying into the suspension of disbelief. Yeah. Like we're all making like a joint commitment to get a little weird and tell a weird story in the desert. And you run across the occasional person who's like not bought in and uh-huh. like a, a more prepper mindset of that's not actually yeah, yeah. how it would work. Well, mm-hmm. like, well, it works in my world. Yeah, but in my fantasy <laughs> right. apocalypse, it, it works this way. <laughs> and it, I always love like running into people who are f- first getting it, like first realizing that like, oh, if I just let go of my preconceived notions and just go with what's happening in front mm-hmm. of me, mm-hmm. Wasteland's gonna give me like something to do. And so if you, what do we tell our newbies all the time when we bring new people? It's just like, don't come in with this idea of what story you wanna tell. Mm-hmm. Let Wasteland and all these other groups show you something and just go with whatever story yeah. gets presented in front of you. Because it'll be a it. lot more fun than this like idea you you make up in your head beforehand. Mm. Right. Yeah. And if you're not open to improvising and letting letting the the event kind of shape your walk, um, you'll probably get disappointed and hit some dead ends. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of yes Could, and. Yeah. You have to remember yeah, you that. Gotta, mm-hmm. And being okay losing from time to time. Losing is sometimes the best. It's so fun. Like making someone yeah. else's day 
is honestly so much better than me having the spotlight because that sounds horrifying. Well, and <laughs> in good in good post apocalyptic stories, like your your hero sometimes fails, and then they yeah. have to get back up and figure right. out what to do now. That's yeah. much more interesting than like I totally mm-hmm. did it and I was perfect the whole time. Go yeah, on. every every good hero story, and this is like you know the hero with a thousand faces hero story. Yeah. Um, about halfway through, they they have to go up against their uh, pro, uh, antagonist, and they lose. You have to lose in yep. order to to get the motivation to grow to be able to beat that antagonist. And so that's a really good point, actually. Is you know losing in a story, uh, and uh, I forget what the show was. It was uh, based on D and D games, um, but then they would make a cartoon out of it. And there was this wonderful expose that I found. Um, not expose, that's the wrong thing, but uh, a, a wonderful narrative about it. The guy goes in, uh, you know, all the characters go into like a dungeon space um, and a bad guy shows up and the guy says, all right, my character runs away. And they were like, what, what are you doing? You can't just run away. Why are you running away? But uh, the point he was trying to make there was character growth. You know, he knew about story. And so, you know, if they all just fought against this bad guy and and they won, they would have nothing to learn. His character would have no growth to to go through. But by running away, he's established like he's he doesn't quite have the bravery or the skills or the or the uh, ambition yet. He needs to earn that, and that made for a much better story as they made the cartoon out of it. You know. Yeah, I I would guess that's Critical Role, based on that like, sounds making right. a car- that sounds right. cartoon because they mm. played their first series and then turned it into an animated cartoon. Uh huh. Yeah, so even though, you know, it didn't make sense in the D&D game for him to run away and not even try, uh, it made for a much better story in that sense. So, I mean, yeah, kind of fun. Yeah, I have sat at option. D&D games where people are like, oh, no, I'm running away. <laughs> really? They, because in the moment, you care about your character's life. And mm, so you're mm-hmm. like, I don't want to I don't want to die. And yeah. you run away, and it makes for a better interaction at the table because it's like, mm-hmm. well, you ran, so we had to run, <laughs> and now we have to triumph together, which means we have to help you grow into the uh-huh. hero you're supposed to be. Yeah, sometimes running away is the best choice. It's always yeah, an option. Fascinating. I love that. <laughs> Remember, yeah, that's actually interesting. Like, uh, uh, you know, at, in Wasteland, is there going to be a way to like grind and like learn, uh, earn? clout in different factions like that's got to be something that'll come down the pipeline right i i think the rust devils used to do like graduated bounty hunting caps and i think as people get established they'll start to do the same thing where it's like you've earned this much access yeah you've done this much for us so Mm -hmm. you've got you know you've got clout here with us Mm -hmm. and that You know, so you ran away from a fight with the Skullduggers, but now you have allies, so you can bring your allies <laughs> to the fight with the Skullduggers. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. And uh, um, and unlike with an RPG where you can just look at your stats and find out, you know, I've got 82 out of 100 clout with this tribe, you actually just need to make the personal connections and, like, you know, yep. learn people's names and have mm-hmm. them know yours and, like, be familiar, uh, and boom, you, you've got the clout, right? <laughs> yeah, we... That actually... It reminds me of a, we were, we put up our bounty hunting posters a couple of years in, we'd been going for a couple of years and Uh this newbie shows up with Rooster's bounty and Rooster Mm -hmm. is our guy who carries like all the weapons. Like he's our man at arms. He's sort of like our general, like he makes sure everybody in, in the group has a weapon. So this newbie shows up whose wasteland name is Dirtbag. And he shows up without a weapon. <laughs> and he's like, I'm here to collect your bounty. And Rooster's like, excuse me? You can't collect a bounty without a gun. And so he gives <laughs> this newbie a gun and says, you know, go go get somebody else's bounty first and then you can come back and fight me. Uh-huh. And he later came back to fight Rooster. And then years following, like the next year, he picked up Deadwood and Flavor Saver's bounty because they did a paired Most Wanted uh-huh. And came after them and killed them. So for a couple of years, this newbie oh, who got his first weapon from us was just hunting different members of our group. But That's every time hilarious. we see him at Wasteland, everybody's like, Dirtbag! And is really yeah, excited yeah. to see this guy who keeps trying to kill us every year. <laughs> so good. 
<laughs> so fun. I love it. All right, guys. Well, we should probably wrap this up. Um, where do I want to go? Okay, so one more time, I want to show off this awesome patch, mm. the, uh, the the inaugural patch of the month, the Boneyard oh, yeah. Buzzards, um, showing, of course, a bomb exploding over uh, Los Angeles. It's so good. Um, uh, I'm ex super excited about this. Thank you guys once more for participating and sending it in. Oh, thank um, you. Yeah, I'm so excited. I think I think this is going to be really neat, and um, the collaboration is mostly what I'm excited about because I've got some designs of my own that'll be in the list, but also um, coming up really soon, uh, we've got the air raid sirens. I think they're probably oh, going to be next nice. month. Oh, nice. Yeah, they they sent over an exclusive design. Ooh. Should I show it? Should I show it? Or yeah, should I you should. I like I exclusives. Should show it. We're comic book nerds over here. We have to right. see the exclusives. All right. So this is a design that they were going to do, but had not yet. And they said that I could have it. But there's the Air Raid Sirens Ooh. patch. Oh, that's perfect. I love it. Right? It's, it's oh, that's got, great. It's, it's got the little uh, bomb that is the shaker there. That is a and, clever uh, design. And... Uh, and I love their slogan, just try to sleep with us, which is yeah, just hilarious. So I mean, it just fits <laughs> so well, perfect. right? And Sirens is, of course, spelled S-I-R-E-N-S, -E as in the myth mythological Sirens. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, super cool. And uh, of course, their services of you can um, order a wake up call. Yeah. from us, <laughs> which I have never done. I'm like, I don't want you to wake me up for crying out loud. Yeah, um, we, we barely get enough sleep as it is. Don't <laughs> exactly. Come yell. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would like to sleep until the sounds of Wasteland wake me up naturally, please. Or, or, <laughs> or the, the sun. sunshine. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> or the heat. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think they're probably going to be next month. I got to just kind of count and see where I'm at because right now it's it's depending on how many of each patch I have that is going to be the order. Um, <laughs> but then also uh, I've got a secret collaboration with a Neotropolis tribe um, coming up for hopefully... Um, March so that those will ship out before Neotropolis. Uh, and I've got some designs of my own. I've, I've already got one for December next year, which is kind of fun. Or this year. Um, based on the uh, the Christmas story that I put out. So this is really, it's oh, really fun yeah. and people are getting behind it. And, um, you know, the Patreon's been going for years uh, and it's, um, it's really fun to finally have some physical thing to go along with it and not just the all the digital media that I put out. Um, but yeah, thank you again for participating and being the first one it's super exciting of course we're really happy to do it awesome yay all right guys well um let's see is there anything else you, that i missed that you guys wanted to add uh no unless uh if you've got newbies listening come find us at wasteland this year we're gonna have new fun strange missions for you to do yeah we're not that scary they're not they're actually wonderful to go visit <laughs> and they have a beautiful shade structure so much room, so much space, so much shade. So much room for activities. <laughs> yeah. Visit the Boneyard Buzzards. They'll throw you some shade. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. <laughs> hey, Survivors. Makeshift here to let you know that a brand new 20-minute documentary featuring Wasteland Weekend 2023 Build Week called Keeping the Home Fires Burning is available now on the Apocalypse Post's YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the apocalypse post. This documentary gives an insider look at how the city of Wasteland is constructed, starting with a empty dirt patch on the edge of the Mojave Desert and ending as the largest party in the post-apocalypse, while celebrating all of the staff and volunteers that make it happen. So check it out now, along with a whole bunch of other videos that we've been posting, including the brand newest three hours on Main Street at Wasteland Weekend 2023. All right, Survivors, thanks for tuning in once again. Subscribe wherever you're listening. Leave a thumbs up or a comment if you can. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please go ahead and share it with your friends. And if you didn't, share it with your enemies, along with a candle that smells like spilled beer and the lost hope of ever getting to drink one. I'll see you next time, Survivors. Stay alive. And days and days and days and days and days.